Hi guys, it's Will and welcome back to another video. I just want to say thanks again for the continued support that this channel has received. We've just crossed over 1,000 subscribers guys and it really does mean a hell of a lot to me. It's been absolutely fantastic seeing the response and the growth that this channel has had and uh, it's been an absolute pleasure making these videos for you guys. Now before we begin, I just want to explain that this video is primarily aimed at people who are leveling up their first character. Obviously if you've got maybe two or three 60s already on your account and you've got plenty of gold, you won't really need to put the time in effort into getting these kind of things just because you know you might be able to just farm some gold in uh, Diamond or least for example. Obviously for people who are new to Vanilla WoW, people who are new to a server etc and they're just trying to get that mount at level 40, you know start saving for that mount at level 60, go buy all of their skills etc. This video is basically going to help people like that make as much money as they can while they level. So without further ado guys I'm going to share with you my top 10 tips and tricks to make gold as you level in Vanilla World of Warcraft. So tip number one guys, very simple tip here is just loot everything and you know it sounds really basic but I still see loads of people who don't do this and I don't care if you're level 1 or you're level 5 or level 55 if you've killed that mob loot it now there's two reasons for this first reason being you've got the initial loot off the mob it could be something like a grey item or some copper etc it all counts you can obviously then vendor the grey item but also you've got a chance of getting things like uh, linen you know wool silk etc that kind of thing it really adds up with your professions it really adds up on the auction house and you just never know what you're going to get and the other tip for that is as well which is sort of bringing me on to tip number two now is for your first character i suggest that you take the professions skinning and mining now why those professions i know a lot of people are going to sort of object to that idea but i'm you know hear me out guys let me explain myself skinning and mining are basically very cheap professions to get you are going to struggle getting them at level five with the initial amount of gold that you're going to get but you can maybe farm sort of five or ten mobs and just collect the stuff off that vendor and then you're going to be able to afford the skills you can get yourself set up with as little as two silver you've obviously got to be able to afford the skinning knife and the pickaxe but basically skinning and mining guys really good because a you're going to be able to skin all of the animals that you kill which is pretty much guaranteed money to the vendor i'm not suggesting that you sell those leathers on the auction house to begin with i'm suggesting you just vendor them now again unpopular opinion there guys i know that a lot of you are probably going to say well hold on a second shouldn't we sell that kind of leather on the uh, auction house you know, make some more money off the auction house you can do that guys but just remember that the auction house takes cuts and you've also got the deposit fee on the item that you're selling so for example if i'm going to sell a stack of heavy leather you're going to have to pay a percentage of that to the auction house providing it sells and if you don't sell it you're also going to lose your deposit on the item now what i found with vanilla wow especially right now on the nostalgia pvp server is that it's actually just better to vendor the leather you're going to save out on auction house expense and you're also going to save the time that you're going to spend traveling to the auction house to actually sell that and the other one as well guys mining really really good example here you can see on my tour end that i'm just going around in the alteric mountains i'm mining some mithril and skinning mobs as i go uh, the mithril itself is actually going to make me quite a nice little extra bit of money once i go to hand in my quests really easy money for me guys it's guaranteed hard vendor cash in hand i, I kind of like to see it as uh, you know people have just someone's just left all of this money and i'm just going around picking it all up i'm never out of pocket while i'm leveling whenever i hit level 40 i can always have that extra cash in hand and i mean normally using these tips i've even got enough money to maybe buy myself treat myself to something off the auction house you know if i'm feeling particularly peckish for this certain item that i see i might just go and be able to buy that as well on top of my mount and on top of my riding skill so again guys mining and skinning really really useful very little time investment to initially get started up very little investment in terms of actually putting cash back into them as well because obviously as you level those skills you're going to have to buy the next level up at 75 or 50 and then you've got 150 etc but they, they're going to be very very minimal in terms of the cost of leveling other professions you've got no mats that you need to buy it's just straight up harvesting and vendoring simple simple money guys and the reason that i suggest those two over something like skinning and herbalism say is because herbs just don't fetch the same value you can make so much more money with skinning and mining skinning is just so nice as well because it's soon as you killed that mob it's like the mobs just dropped extra loot you know you can get maybe um i think it's two silver 50 for a heavy leather so that basically means that every single monster that i kill is going to then give me an extra two silver 50 copper and i know obviously for you 60s out there you're probably sniggering at that it's nothing at all i get that but at the same time for someone who's leveling that character for the first time really helpful there it all adds up guys and you know i'm sure once you're level 14 you're the one riding around with that mount compared to everybody else you're going to be grateful that you did it so tip 
number three is uh, don't buy the skills you don't need. I kind of covered this in my previous video, but again, hunters, do you really need distracting shots? Uh, warriors, do you need thunderclap? These skills cost money. Are you going to use those abilities? If you are going to use them, then that's fine. Go ahead and buy them. But a lot of the time, guys, I see people who are buying skills that they don't actually need. So really simple tip there, just save yourself some money, keep that extra gold in your pocket and just only invest in the skills that your character is actually going to use while you level. Obviously once you get to end game raiding and you might want to change your spec or something like that, by all means go all out on your skills, it's completely up to you, at that point you're going to have a mount at least, it's each to their own as far as that's concerned. But just until level 40 guys, only buy the skills that you need. So coming in at tip number 4 guys, this is going to require a bit of time investment on your part, but take fishing. And why do I say take fishing? Well, the fish that themselves that you actually get in rivers and stuff they're not going to be worth that much money but the fish that you get from pools like oily blackmouth for example are worth a bomb on the auction house a really really good money maker there for people who are low level and it's also just so easy to make this kind of money a really good example here is uh, when you're in ratchet for example and you're on the pier waiting for that ship to come in you've got at least three notes guys three notes now you can either be that guy that's just sort of stood there waiting for the boat or you can be that guy with the fishing rod catching all of those notes and making that extra bank on the auction house and that's not the only thing you can do with fishing either you've also got things like chests which you can loot but with fishing as well if you can be asked to level it to max level that's actually going to come in really useful later on in raiding there's a boss for example in uh, it's Zilgarub. you need max level fishing to fish him out and sometimes that can even just get you into the raid if you can summon that boss so really really good when they get fishing it's useful for you in so many different ways but primarily it's getting that early money getting those fish stacks up, getting those chests in, and just making bank as you quest. You are going to have to spend a little bit of time to begin with just getting those 50 points in before you can start thinking about fishing in somewhere like the Barrens, for example. But the return on the time investment for low levels, it just can't be beaten, guys. So again, really good skill there. Highly recommend it. Now, tip number five, guys, I've got a bit of a controversial one, and that's white items. So I've watched a couple of other YouTubers discussing this kind of stuff, and everyone's always saying, oh, guys, put your white items on the auction house put your white items on the auction house you're gonna make so much money guys just let's just hold on a second okay so and I see this a lot and this is something that I've actually been making money off of don't always put the white item on the auction house guys find out what it's worth beforehand I understand you can't see the value of items to vendors uh, you know in vanilla world of Warcraft coming straight out without any add-ons but there is an add-on out there. I'm going to leave a link to the download of that add-on in the description of this video. Just download that add-on and then whenever you loot something, it's going to tell you what that item is worth to the vendor. Now, when you go to the auction house, you know, you can check what it's worth on the auction house compared to what it's worth to the vendor. Right now, I can go away when I'm having breakfast. I can just leave my character at the auction house doing a scan of the auction house. And I'm actually finding items, guys. You know, I'm finding maybe... 10 to 15 items a scan where people have listed things for less than the vendor price. I mentioned this in my previous video. It's kind of worrying me a little bit because while it's really good money making for me, obviously people are losing out on money. Not only are they getting less for what they would at the vendor, they also have to pay the auction house a percentage of the value of the item. So please guys, just double check that. Get the add-on, it's called Informant. Really useful there. Check the value of your white items against the auction house and the vendor before you decide what you're going to do with them. Now for tip number six, guys, I've got a fairly easy one here and that's make a bank hole. I did touch on this in my leveling video but again guys bank holds really really useful for making you that money it doesn't matter how many characters you make if you keep all of your gold transactions consolidated on one character it's going to be really easy for you to keep track of your money you're always going to know how much money you've got on your account in total across all of your characters permanently parked in the capital city of your faction you can mail all of your items to them and then you can then make the decision on whether you want to vend that item or sell it on the auction house another really useful tip as well with the bank hold situation is guys that if you level your bank alt to level 5 he can actually get disenchanting and in vanilla world of warcraft if you get disenchanting it doesn't matter what level it is at level 1 you can disenchant any uncommon item in the game it doesn't matter if it's level 5 or level 60 if you've got level 1 enchanting you can disenchant it now one of the really cool things about this is guys with the auction houses there's no deposit fee on enchanting materials so let's say you get some strange dust off like a level 15 item that level 15 item you're gonna have to pay a deposit to put that in the auction house if you disenchant it 
it, you're going to be able to put that on the auction house and not have to pay a deposit on it. Obviously, guys, that's something that you're going to want to do to items that you think you can make a better markup on. For things like, you know, weapons and stuff, it still might be worth just selling those to the vendor. And that brings me on to tip number seven, guys, which is blue bind on equip gear. Now, I discussed this at length with my friends, and I do think it's worth pointing out. I know the temptation, guys. I know when you're out questing and you find that delicious bind on equip blue item. You know, it could be really good for you. You could get, you know, maybe five more intellect off it. But again, guys, do you really need that item? You're going to out-level it. You're going to replace it. And that item could be the difference between you having a mount and not having a mount. Now, ask yourself this. Which would you prefer to have, the mount or the item? Because I'm pretty sure, guys, it's the mount. And if you can sell that blue item for four or five gold and only have a green item instead, go for it, guys. It's much better to sell that item. You're going to outgrow it. The end game here is to get to level 60 and have as much money as possible. So sell that blue, let someone else have it, and get that delicious money. Now, speaking of rare items, guys, that brings me on to tip number eight, which is rare recipes. Now, what do I mean by rare recipes, okay? I'm not talking about the kind of recipes that drop off mobs, even though they can be good sometimes. I'm actually talking about rare vendor recipes. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, so for example, here you can see that I've got my Tauren, I'm out in Alteric Mountains, and there just happens to be a goblin here on top of this, uh, you know, this old broken down wall. Now, this vendor is the only vendor in the game that actually sells the Alchemy Frost Oil recipe. And, uh, you know, I can get it here for a couple of silver, and on the Horde Auction House, it's worth maybe four to five gold. Now this of course is only on my server and I'm going to have to put an initial outlay out in order to actually afford this. I'm going to have to invest some of my money before I can make money. But this is a really good gold maker if you're leveling. It's going to make you a nice little bit of money for very little effort indeed. You can buy these rare recipes from all over Azeroth. I know that there's some really good ones in Ferelas for example and uh, Desolus has some good ones as well. It doesn't matter whether it's professions guys or cooking. If it's a rare recipe from the vendor, check it out on the auction house. If you know that you're going to make money off of it, buy it. Even if it's just 50 silver, you know guys. I mean, sometimes you can make maybe even 20 silver. And I know that there's a really good recipe in the Undercity, for example, that I can buy for a couple of silver and even get a couple of gold for it on the auction house. And that's just a really nice little money spinning. Uh, I do recommend you check that out. I might well have shot myself in the foot by recommending that to everybody, but, you know, if it's going to help you guys, that's awesome. And, you know, that's one of the things I love about doing this. Now, coming in at number nine is food and water. Case scenario, level 35. You're five levels out from your mount. And basically, guys, food and water really starts to actually eat into your costs now. Five food or five water from a vendor, depending on which faction, you know, which race faction you buy it from, it's going to cost you 18 silver per five. That's 72 silver a stack. Two stacks, that's going to cost you one gold, 44 silver. Now, let's just say, guys, for those five levels between the levels of 35 to 40, you're only going to use one stack of food and one stack of water. By the time that you've gone from 35 to 40, you'll have ended up spending 7 gold, 20 silver on food and drink. That is a huge amount of money for someone at that level, but it could be the difference yet again between getting that mount and you know being stuck walking around at level 40. Now a really good solution to this guys is to actually just find a mage. There's two reasons for this. One, you're going to do him a favour. I mean no one's going to turn down free money and if all he has to do for that money is summon you up some food and drink, you know, he's obviously going to benefit from that extra coin in his pocket and you're also going to save as well. You know guys, if I offer a mage 20 silver for a stack of food and water, he's not going to say no to that. It's free money in his pocket, it saves money in mine, it's a win-win for both yourself and that mage. So again guys, one last time, food and water, make sure that you're buying it from a player and not the vendor, because we all know how much those vendors love to rip us off. And finally guys, onto tip number 10, and again this comes down to the uh, informant add-on, is check the value of quest rewards. Now what do I mean by that? When you hand in that quest, at the end of that quest chain, chances are you're going to be able to pick an item for yourself. Normally that's an uncommon item, and it'll be anything from, you know, Know, cloth braces all the way up to a sword or a two-handed axe and of course guys one of those is going to be worth more than the other one you might only get 30 silver for from the vendor the other you might get one gold 54 now which one are you going to pick guys it's not rocket science now what informant allows you to do you can see the value of the items before you actually pick the reward so you can actually use this add-on to go into the quest rewards you can tell exactly which one's worth which in terms of value and then pick the biggest yielding reward it's always going to allow you then to get 100 percent return on each of the quest that you do and get that extra bit of money towards your mouth. Okay guys, well that just about wraps it up for this video. We are going to
going to be doing some gold farming videos later on, but this is basically all of my tips to help get you that mount at level 14, you know, get as much money as you possibly can on the way to 60. I really hope you found these tips useful. If you want to help me out, guys, let me know in the description below what you think of the video. I love getting feedback from you. Even if it's constructive criticism, guys, I'll be grateful to hear it. I've now got my social media links down in the description as well. If you guys want to talk to me, let me know what you think. I'm just going to say one more time, thank you so much for the support the channel has received. I'm so stoked that we've got over a thousand subscribers. And as always, guys, I'm going to see you in the next video.